Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Open Bytes Blogger Z and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost Underneath his creeper bridge Hoping goats will cross Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge Right, hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast, episode 57 With me, Tim and Roy And uh, Roy's back So, without further ado, we're going to get straight onto the show Because we're on a little bit of a tight schedule tonight So, Roy, you're going to start off with our first piece of news I think we both agree that one of the uh, major stories, at least the ones covered the most uh, in the past few days, was the Linus Torvalds uh, story. Basically, as I understand it, and probably you're ahead of me when it comes to this story, because I've been away uh, off the internet for the past week and a half, uh, my understanding is that he moved away from GNOME to XFCE, and he also said some remark about Forking GNOME, perhaps, or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I was reading this much on the periphery because I've been saying exactly the same thing for quite some time. Uh, I wasn't one of the people impressed with GNOME Shell, uh, and I don't think there's many people who are, correct me if I'm wrong there. So, since I'd used F- XFCE for quite a few years with uh, the Wolvix distro, I was uh, no stranger to it, and it, it's really no big, ma- right, big shift for me to to move over to it. Uh, but yeah, I think that's the crux of what was said. It's quite interesting because it, it does make you wonder the thought processes behind Gnome Shell and this new easy user interface. People allege it's trying to emulate Apple and it's trying to emulate this and the other. And it does make you wonder who it's exactly aimed for. Uh, it certainly doesn't appeal to myself. I can't believe that my opinions are, are that unique. Um, the traditional desktop, for want of a better word, with taskbars and menu items in roughly the same places have been for years, is a good way of working. Uh, I don't see GNOME Shell being any better way of working. It is very different, and they say change is often uh, not liked by uh, by people who are used to doing things in a certain way, but I don't see what benefits it offers, even if I spend the time with it, to um, to get myself used to this new you know, UI that's uh, supposed to be all singing and dancing. Um, wow. That's putting us... That's putting aside the flaws which have already been found in it so far, and of course you can expect that because it's a it's it's, it's a new product, so to speak. So um, I, I don't know what uh, what your thoughts were on this, Roy. Yeah, well, can you explain to a person like me who hasn't actually tried GNOME three, uh, what would be missing from GNOME three which you had in previous versions? Because uh, I spent uh, I spent the past week or so, actually more than a week, using GNOME two point three or two point thirty mm-hmm. to be more precise, um, and one of the things I found about it, and actually set up a computer with uh, GNOME, I actually started to think, why do I use, why do I insist on using KDE? Because GNOME was actually very much polished, was very easy to use, and it pretty much did everything I was used to in KDE, except for specific applications that had functionality, uh, which was requ- required in my case for all sorts of reasons. But uh, one of the things I wonder is. What could they have ruined in GNOME 3, which you think you should tell readers or listeners about? It's hard to put into words how different uh, GNOME Shell is. And my way of describing it is probably something like this. For users of GNOME, uh, the traditional GNOME, GNOME 2 series, you've got your run-of-the-mill desktop. It's something that people have been used to, rightly or wrongly, through Windows and other, I mean, Webbench 1.3. It's a very similar, a very similar environment which everybody is familiar with, and it allows you a lot of control. For example, I often write a quick note, so I might uh, right-click on my desktop space, create documents, type a little note, save it. And I've got complete control over my desktop. I've got shortcuts on there. I've got all sorts of things going on. The way I describe GNOME Shell to me is like it's been Androidized. If uh, if you can understand what I'm what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all slidey menu-y, it's all big large icons, it's all sub-menus within like a graphical foray of 
pretty icons and flashy little uh, effects. It's buffered is probably the best way I can describe it. That, that's the feeling I've got now. I, I used Gnome Shell for a very short period of time with Fedora when I was taking a brief look at it, but it was what I saw was enough to tell me that really I didn't want to get used to learning it. I didn't want to spend the time this, get used to this new way of working. It may very well be a better way of working and it may well be something which I'm completely missing from this. But for me, the traditional desktop, which people have been used to for years, and let's be fair, on a standard desktop with a keyboard mouse CPU, it's not a prohibit- inhibitive way of working with a standard desktop. There's nothing that I require which I haven't already got. I've got my shortcuts on the desktop. So for me, GNOME Shell just didn't sit right on a desktop. On a netbook, it's probably going to be fantastic. On a touch screen device, it's probably absolutely fantastic and I've got no issue with it at all. For a desktop machine, which I'll use to for 99% of my work online, uh, my blog, etc., etc., we, I just couldn't use that device. I just did not feel in control with GNOME Shell, and that's probably the best way to describe it. I would recommend everybody tries it uh, to see what I'm trying to say, but for me, it just it just didn't sit right. And XFCE, I can modify, which I have, uh, I've used it before, and I can make that very GNOME-like anyway. Um, how I like my desktop, I think I've said this before, I'm looking at my screen now, I have my uh, shortcuts on the taskbar at the top of the screen with my uh, applications menu there. And at the bottom, I've got all my running uh, running packages uh, displayed and um, all my folders are open on my on my bottom bar along with my virtual desktop. So, And that's what I'm used to working, so two taskbars. And it, it works very well for me. And from what I've seen in screenshots, when you get the, the plethora of screenshots and quick pick and on now on Google Plus people showing their desktops off. It seems to be a pretty generic way of working and I don't, think, don't seem to be the only one that works like that. So that for me is the way I work and GNOME Shell doesn't fit into that, uh, into that way of working basically. Um, yeah. Conversely, conversely though, the strange thing was Unity seems to take a slightly different angle on it and I can't Look at why. I think I said at the time that my wife uh, was very comfortable working with Unity uh, from day one, and some. I'm trying to work out why that would be better. But uh, m- my wife was a very big fan of Unity, so in the sense of attracting a new user or attracting somebody who hasn't used Linux before, Unity appears to be the more accessible of the two. Um, that's just my experience with, with one test subject, albeit my wife. So. Yes, that's that, that's yeah. my view yeah. so far. Um, and I've read a review, which uh, no, no, not exactly a review, but more of an uh, anecdote of sorts, from a person called Homer, who was posting in the Linux Advocacy News Group. And it was really surprising to me. I know he was distancing himself from Ghana a few years back, actually two years ago. I think it had to do with the uh, the whole .NET Mono situation back then. And uh, he was he was very pleased with well I would say very pleased but he he was surprisingly pleased with uh, with Unity, which usually is associated with people who are kind of new to an operating system like Linux uh, Linux. And he himself is a person who's very advanced as a user, and this had me thinking perhaps Unity has got a undeserved reputation of being a very noob friendly or noob oriented type of uh, user. I mean, Ubuntu has always had this a bit of a bad reputation associated with, uh, you know, it's for people who don't know how to use Linux and people who are very new to Linux. And and maybe to some people, the Unity interface was something to latch onto, uh, to sort of validate and to justify their conviction uh, that if you're using Unity, you're using something very simple, very easy to use, and therefore you don't really, you're not like a lit user. I think, I mean, my personal view of why Unity was given such a, a hard time, I think purely comes down to the popularity of Ubuntu. I think when you look at the amount of users that are in the uh, Ubuntu ecosystem, uh, to have Unity there is not going to please everybody, and I don't think any package or product would ever please everybody. So when Unity was introduced, you're going to have a lot more people, uh, statistically, that are going to not like it than you would say if the distro involved was a Woolvix or something with a smaller user base. So, of course, you're going to hear more about it. Ubuntu has always been distro, or for a very long time, which people have talked about. It's always in at least three or four articles in every day news feed on most of the major sites, some shape or form. So, of course, when some people don't like the Unity, Obviously, it's going to, you're going to hear about it more often. Uh, I think that was maybe one of the reasons why such a big deal was made of it. I mean, as a, as, 
from my experience with it, there was nothing wrong with it. It wasn't what I was used to working with, but for some reason I found that more accessible for me than uh, than I did uh, GNOME Shell. And I think maybe it boils down to um, 